Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel S Chemistry. My name is Sonal and in today's video we are going to study about the fuel cells. So before we study what are fuel cells, let us try to understand why do we require fuel cells, okay? So basically in uh, thermal power plants, uh, we use the process of chemical combustion to get electricity, but this entire process is very indirect. That is, by doing the chemical combustion in thermal power plants, chemical combustion is usually done of uh, the fossil fuels, for example, coal or oil, okay? So chemical combustion is done of these fossil fuels, okay? And in this process, uh, water is produced in the form of steam, and this particular steam is used to run turbines or turbines, which will ultimately produce electricity. So using the thermal power plants, the process of chemical combustion uh, gets converted into electricity but this entire process is not very efficient and it can cause a lot of pollution as well. So fuel cells can be used as an efficient alternative in order to convert chemical energy into electricity and that too the entire process of conversion is direct. So now that we know why we require uh, fuel cells, uh, let us study about them in detail, okay? So when you're preparing yourself uh, with the topic of fuel cells for your examination, uh, you need to focus on two things, okay? The first obviously being uh, what is a fuel cell, okay? What are the components of a fuel cell? Like how would you make a fuel cell or what is a fuel cell uh, made up of? That's the first section. And the second section that you need to focus on are the chemical reactions. Chemical reactions uh, are a priority whenever you're studying fuel cells. So first, let's look at what is the definition of a fuel cell, okay? So fuel cell can be defined as galvanic cells that are designed to convert the energy of combustion of fuels like dihydrogen, methane, methanol, etc. directly into electrical energy, okay? So fuel cells are nothing but galvanic cells which are designed to convert energy of combustion, which is your chemical energy, directly into electrical energy. So this is the definition of fuel cells. Next, we need to know the components of the fuel cells. So along with knowing the components, you will also have to know how to draw the figure of a fuel cell, okay? So let me just show you the figure over here first. It's a basic cell. Whenever we deal with electrochemistry, whenever we deal with cells, uh, there are two most, uh, foremost important things that we need to know. First is uh, what are the electrodes present in the cell and second is the electrolyte. Okay, so whenever you're constructing any cell, you need to have an idea of what material is used in order to make the electrodes and what is the electrolyte, okay? So here also it's the same thing. You have the electrodes present, the anode negatively charged and the cathode which is positively charged and you have an aqueous electrolyte, okay? So this, the most uh, used, the one which we have over here is the most used uh, fuel cell and that is a dihydrogen dioxygen that is H2O2 fuel cell okay so since we are dealing with H2O2 fuel cell you will have two inlets uh, one will be for dihydrogen one will be for dioxygen okay so try to remember it in this way you have the electrodes then you have the electrolyte and then then you have uh, the inlets two inlets one will be for dihydrogen, one will be for dioxygen and then obviously the outlet for your final product that is water. So the outlet is labeled over here. So this is how the fuel cell, H2O2 fuel cell can be constructed. Now let's see uh, of what material are these different components made up of, okay? So components of the cell, you have porous carbon electrodes, okay? These carbon-based electrodes are usually made up of graphite. And why do they have to be porous is that so uh, the diffusion of your reactants is allowed, okay? You require porous electrodes in order to facilitate or in order to allow the diffusion of reactants, okay? And they are made up of carbon, usually uh, graphite is used, fine? Then we come to the electrolyte. So the electrolyte used over here, okay, this particular electrolyte that we have, uh, in the cell is a concentrated aqueous sodium hydroxide solution. 
Okay, so this is the electrolyte. Now, one important thing to note in fuel cells is the presence of catalyst. Okay, catalysts like finely divided platinum or palladium are incorporated into the electrodes. This means that the uh, graphite based electrodes are actually coated with a very thin layer of finely divided platinum or palladium and the purpose of this is obviously what a catalyst does is increases the rate of the reaction. Okay, so the same role is played over here by platinum or palladium that is to increase the rate of your reaction. Now we have completed the components of the fuel cell, the construction of the fuel cell. The next part that we need to know are the reactions okay so under reactions you'll have to know three reactions one which takes place at the anode the second one which takes place at the cathode and the third one will be the overall reaction okay so you know your reacting species already it is an h2o2 fuel cell okay so start with the reactions the first reaction we will note down is the reaction that will take place at the anode okay now at the anode the reaction occurring is going to be an oxidation reaction okay at anode you will have the oxidation reaction so this is how the reaction takes place h2 plus it's going to react with the hydroxide ions in order to give you water so now you'll have to just balance the reaction you can put it two over here so that will give us four hydrogens and two oxygens and two over here Yes, that will again give us four hydrogens and two oxygens. So the reaction is balanced, okay, in terms of atoms. In terms of charge, you will have to balance it. This side you have two negative charges. So this side you have to add two electrons, okay. So this is the reaction taking place at the anode. It is an oxidation reaction. Similarly, you have to write the reaction at cathode, okay. So at cathode, there will be reduction and since hydrogen has already participated in the oxidation re uh, reaction at the anode, at the cathode, your reacting species will be O2, okay? So O2 is going to react with water in order to give you hydroxide ions. Let's balance this reaction. You can put it to this side, so that will give us two hydrogens and you can put a half this side. So that will give us two oxygens on this side and two oxygens on that side as well, okay? Now the atoms are balanced, uh, the charge is not yet balanced, so you'll have to add two electrons on the left hand side. So these are the half cell reactions taking place at the anode and the cathode. I can give you a key to remember these reactions, okay? Now the key for the reaction taking place at cathode is COR, core. Okay, so you can just remember one and the opposite of it will be valid for the reaction taking place at anode, right? So at cathode, so that's basically C, at cathode, the reacting species is oxygen, so CO, and the reaction taking place is reduction. So COR, cathode, oxygen, reduction. Okay, so the reaction taking place at cathode, the reacting species is dioxygen, reaction taking place is reduction. Okay, COR is the key to remember this. The opposite of it will be true for your anode. So anode, reacting species is dihydrogen and the reaction taking place is oxidation. So you can remember it as AHO, but COR or core is easier to remember. Now the last step that is remaining is to have the overall reaction, okay? So you can club your half cell reactions in order to get your overall reaction. First, look at these two reactions and cancel out the terms like which are common, right? So we have two electrons here, two electrons here. These will cancel out. Two hydroxide, two hydroxide. These will cancel out, okay? So you need to look for similar terms which are present on the opposite side, okay? So these will also cancel out, okay? And then you have one water molecule over here and one over here. So one of, uh, two actually, one of that will cancel out. So your final reaction will be H2 plus uh, half O2. Yes, that is all that remains on the left hand side giving you H2O. So this is your overall H2O2 fuel cell reaction. So to conclude, you can also mention the states in the reaction like uh, H2 is a gas, O2 is a gas and the product is liquid. And if you want to get rid of this fractional value, multiply by 2 throughout and this will be your final overall H2O2 fuel cell reaction. Thank you.